Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. She's out back with her critters. Ellie Mae? Yeah, Pa? Come on in here. Gonna have a family confab. <laughs> now, as you all know, poor widow Fenwick and her youngin' is coming to spend a day, and we all got lots to do. Fenwick. <laughs> Do one right away. I'd like to say a few words first. Now, uh, let's commence with the vittles. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, Fanny. Fanny, I mean, uh, I mean the vittles for the Fenwicks. What you got planned? Oh, uh, possum stew, grits and jowls, some corn pone, and some pickle crawdads. It's <laughs> mm, a little rich for folks that ain't eat for a while. Yeah, maybe you're right, Jed. To get the wrinkles out of their belly, I'll start them off with some nice hot owl soup. Mm. <laughs> That'll be fine. Now, Ellie, you and Jethro delivered them that box of clothes, right? That's right, Pop. I never knowed there were so many needy folks in Beverly Hill. <laughs> Me neither. But my doggies, you gotta admire that widow Fenwick. She's poor but proud. Jethro and Ellie tells me that right up across the front of this little house of her, she's got writ big as life, Fenwick House. to visit the Clampets. It's just that I can't bring myself to wear those dreadful clothes. They are not dreadful. They are the very latest fashion introduced at the Willows Finishing School by Miss Ellie Mae Clampett herself. <laughs> Don't you understand, Mummy? The latest thing is to look basic and understated. It has something to do with zen. <laughs> but they just don't look right. Mummy. When a girl as rich as Ellie Mae Clampett wears something, it's got to be right. <laughs> now, come on, let's not be the last millionaires in Beverly Hills to get the new look. The Clampett look. <laughs> Where's everybody going in such a hurry? We's gonna have Jethro load furniture take off to the Fenwicks. Well, now, hold up a loading that truck again. How do we know that the family's gonna need all this stuff? Well, like I told you, Uncle Jet, they need just about everything. Well, how do we know their place is gonna hold it all? Let's go over there and take a look. Yeah. I'd like to see the winner's place. Well, now, Granny, I think uh, the women folks better stay here in case they get here while we're gone. How about you men folks staying? Well, you women folks don't know how to drive the truck. Maybe I can. I ain't never tried. <laughs> Crank her up, Jethro. <laughs> Hefty Granny down. Oh. We'll be back directly. The widow is liable to be right stove up when she gets here, walking all the way. Don't worry, Jed. One slug of my rheumatiz medicine, and she'll be as good as new. <laughs> Granny, can your rheumatiz medicine sure enough cure rheumatiz? I didn't say it can cure rheumatiz, Ellie, but it can sure make having it a pure pleasure. <laughs> We 
don't want to embarrass them, Jethro, so if they steal the home, we'll right quick drive by. Don't look like nobody's home, Uncle Jeff. Well, come on, let's take a look around. On the box of clothes, Uncle Jed. Right here's where Ellie and me left them. Jethro, I've seen places with little or nothing in them, but this is pitiful. <laughs> Not a chair to sit on. Nor a bed, neither. They ain't got a wash bowl, nor a pitcher to fill it with water, nor a window big enough to throw it out. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jed, we gonna bring them some stuff? No, Jethro. You couldn't squeeze enough stuff in this place to make it fit for two women to live in. <laughs> well, then what are we going to do? We got to get them to move into our place. It ain't going to be easy, the widow being such a prideful woman. But it just ain't right for us to have so much stuff and to let them live here in a place like this. <laughs> now, there is something I just can't understand. How can folks live in a big, fine house like that and let a poor, starving widow and her youngin' live in a place like this right outside their gate? <laughs> Uncle Jeff, let's go up and give them what fur. Uh, it ain't for us to speak judgment on them. Maybe the spirit of love will take hold like it did Ms. Drysdale. The clap is the moving for love, for love. The clap is the moving for love, for love. The clap is the moving Splendid. You came back for another load. <laughs> well, now, hold on. Uh, we decided not to move these things. Why not? Well, we're hoping that the Fenwicks will move in and use them here. The Fenwicks? Mrs. Radnor Fenwick? Oh, yes, ma'am. You know, the widow with the skinny daughter named Cynthia. They are moving into this house? Well, we're hoping they will. But this is marvelous. I've been trying for years to meet Mrs. Radnor Fenwick, and now she's going to be my next door neighbor. Well, it ain't for certain yet. Have you engaged a real estate agent to help you sell them on the place? No, ma'am. We're just kind of figuring on talking them into it when they come over. I'll help you. I'll dash home and change and come back and help you. <laughs> you see what I mean, Jethro? Spirit of love has put wings on her feet. I'll well, say, Uncle Jed. Just look at her go over that head. <laughs> and that mink, you look just like any other common, ordinary, everyday millionaire. Now, take it. No, no, sir, I can't. I just can't. Well, you must. I just can't. So, Mummy, if anyone were actually to see you, I would die of mortification. Mummy, I thought I told you, no Jew. No, no, Cynthia, I feel positively nude without diamonds. We <laughs> are trying to achieve the quiet, but look, a look of studied slovenliness. Oh, Cynthia. Beasley, our purses, please. No, 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 Cynthia, not those buckets. Silly, Mommy. Yesterday, Ellie Mae Clabbert carried one to school, and the effect was devastating. Oh, dear, if your father could see us now, he'd just turn over in his mouth to leave. Beasley, get the rules out of sight quickly. We'll call you if we need you. Yes, Beasley, park it close by. Yes, I'll phone you to the front seat number. <laughs> oh, Mommy, look at that. Yes. Disgraceful, isn't it? Disgraceful? It's fabulous. Unbelievably understated. It's probably the only purely existentialist car in Beverly Hills. We must have it copied. But, Cynthia, we've used nothing but rolls for decades. Oh, Mommy, this is progress. Don't you understand? Frankly, no. I seem to have lost all sense of values. It's like a nightmare. Well, here, come sit down and pull yourself together before we meet them. Oh, it's just all so confusing. 
I just know this never could have happened if Coolidge was still in the White House. <laughs> Pa, don't you want me to set the table in the fancy eating room? I reckon not, Ellie. We gotta be special careful not to put on airs around the poor widow. Let's eat in the kitchen family's time like we always had. Well, that's a good idea. If we want the Fenwicks to move in here with us, we gotta make them feel like this family. Jed, is the Fenwicks moving in with us lock, stock, and barrel? Granny, the Fenwicks ain't got a lock, stock, and barrel to move in with. <laughs> right, Kelly? That's right, Paul. Not even a rain barrel. He ain't got a pump. He ain't got a place to wash at all. Well, the best thing to do when they get here is to stick them in the tub and scrub them down. I don't think they'd take to that right off. Hey, Ella May. Come on, Ellie, let's go swimming. What's the matter with you? We's got company coming. Oh, Granny, I'm hot and tired. You get into some decent clothes. Now, hold on, Granny. I think maybe Jeff will solve their problem. You see there, Granny? I solved your problem. What problem, Uncle Jeff? <laughs> Getting a Fenwick scrub without shaming him, then. You mean I should do it? Oh, or you just go for a swim in a cement pond and take along a cake of your granny's live soap and a nice stiff brush. Ellie Mae, when the widow and her young'un get over here, you invite them down to the cement pond for a swim. Okay, Paul. When they get down to the pond, Jethro, you commence to soaping and a scrubbing and a splashing, and they'll get the idea. My dingies, that's a first rate notion. Well, thank you, Granny. <laughs> There goes that spooky music, coming out of the walls again. Boy, it's pretty. Yeah, I hope it keeps playing until the winter gets here. It might cheer her up. <laughs> well, someone best open the door, because as soon as that music starts to play, someone's going to come and knocking at the door. I noticed that. Take a look outside, Ellie. <laughs> and you get your nakedness out of sight. <laughs> Please, you can do it. Come on, I'll help oh. you. Oh. They's coming, but that poor old widow woman can't hardly make it. I'll get my jug. Is he wearing the clothes you bring him? Yeah, Pa, and toting buckets. To carry home leftovers, Lord love him. Let's go give me a helping hand. Howdy there, Cynthia. This year's my Pa, and I reckon this is your mom. Welcome, welcome. Well, dog, if you ain't plum tuckered with a Fenwick, but don't you worry. Granny will fix that. Take their buckets out to the kitchen, Ellie. Yes, sir, Pa. See you in a little oh, bit, okay. Cynthia. Thank you, darling. Too low. Ellie May, be sure they're scoured good and don't leak. Do it, Granny. <laughs> Here, Witter, this will brace you up. Oh, thank you. Orange pico. No, oh, white lightning. Oh, I'm not familiar with the blend, but tea is tea. <laughs> that got her to breathing deep. Here, Mommy, have a cigarette, darling. Oh, I wouldn't let a flame so close to your maw just yet. You just might set her off. Come on, Willie. Let's go to the kitchen. I'll give you a nice hot bowl of owl soup. Owl soup? <laughs> oh, Cynthia, please send for the rolls. <laughs> no, Mama. She's right, Witter. You don't need no rolls. Granny's baked some corn pones. <laughs> oh, she eat my corn oh, pones. No. Come on, Witter. Oh, come. Cynthia, please help. Uh, Mr. Klein, but if I might be alone with Mommy for just a few moments, I think I shall be able to compose her. Okay, Cynthia. Just follow your nose to the kitchen. Yeah, the grits and jowls will lead you right to the door. Good girl. <laughs> Cynthia, did she say grits and jowls? Yes, Mommy. Doubtless the maid and the butler. <laughs> now, come, do get a grip oh. on yourself. Oh, yeah. Mommy, think of all the trouble the Clampets have taken to achieve a, a total look. The truck, those clothes, their speech. Why, they even weave. You'd weave, too, if you ever drank their tea. I <laughs> must try to emulate them. They'll never sell this house to the Fenwicks. We can practice on the cleaning woman. <laughs> 
Howdy there. Are you Grit? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, uh, we all is looking for Grits and Jowl. <laughs> well, you'll find them in the kitchen. And please stay there, out of sight. <laughs> now see here. Uh, we uns is friends of the Clampers. <laughs> Obviously. And the sooner you're all out of Beverly Hills, the better. Meantime, stay out of sight in the kitchen. <laughs> that is the surliest cleaning woman I've ever seen. See, Mummy, even the Clampets have a servant problem. Yes, for the first time, I'm beginning to feel a common bond with them. We're both members of an oppressed minority group. Millionaires. <laughs> sniffed her way to the kitchen yet? Well, not yet, Pa. Should I go and find her? Well, let's have a little confab first. Now, Jethro is getting powerful hungry, paddling around in the cement pond with that brush and soap. <laughs> Ellie, you hinted to the widow and Cynthia about going swimming? Well, ain't had a chance, Pa. Well, they must be nigh on to starving. Granny, can we skip the wash and go right to eating? Jed, from what you tell me about the way they've been living, I'd feel much better if they were washed down good before they sat at my table. Maybe you're right. They didn't look bad, but you never can tell. Oh, there you are. <laughs> we're still looking for grits and jowls. <laughs> oh, we'll get to them directly. Ellie. Oh, 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 Cynthia, I bet you and your ma would like to go swimming, huh? I wouldn't. And now neither would I. We got a dandy pond, all made out of cement. Nice clean water in it, too. And plenty of room to splash around and work up a good lather. No, thank you. No, I'll pass, too. Well, maybe they just like to look at the pond. Show them, Ellie. OK, Pa. Uh, no, 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 we're, we're not interested. Uh, we didn't even bring suits. Well, I got one that'll fit you. And I'll try and find one for you, at a Face my possum, Jed. Yeah, now, come on, ladies. Pond right out here. Come on, here you go. It's right over there to the right. It's peculiar behavior. Why do you suppose they're so insistent that we come up? My mind. Looky there. <laughs> Magnificent. What a specimen of manhood. Who do you suppose he is? Let's find out. <laughs> Clampett. Oh, Mr. Clampett. Who is that Adonis by the side of the pool? Adonis? That magnificent creature with the rippling biceps. Let's take a look, ma'am. That's why they wanted us to see the pool. They're going to attempt a little matchmaking. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> uh, there is Duke. Duke? He has a title? Yeah, Duke. Duke of what? Where's he from? Well, uh, he was born in Oxford. Uh, he's been with us since he was a little fella. Then he's the Duke of Oxford. <laughs> yeah, I reckon so. We just call him Duke. He hasn't got a wife, has he? Well, he's had his share of lady friends, but uh, nobody rides a moment. Nancy, I sure do hope you change your mind about going swimming. Oh, I have. I have. Oh, uh, Cynthia, uh, you seem right fond of Duke. If you want him to like you, just... Uh, Tickle him behind the ear. He just loves that, Cynthia. And when he lays over on his back, uh, scratch his belly. <laughs> but don't stand there, get scratching. Show her where to change, Ellie. OK, Paul. Uh, Mr. Clampett, I imagine that uh, Cynthia and I do appear a bit eager. But I want you to know that my daughter is worthy of royalty. We Fenwicks are a very, very old family. Oh, now, Witter, don't talk like that. There's many a good tune left in an old fiddle. <laughs> Here's a brand new swimming suit. Never been wore before. It was given to Jed here for a wedding present. <laughs> Remember, Jed? <laughs> <laughs> Too big. <laughs> Wouldn't be enough left sticking out to wash. Wash? Well, we'll make do. You better leave the room, Jed. <laughs> Come on out to the laundry tub, Winter, and peel your shirt off. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> 
excuse me. Howdy, ma'am. Uh, your Grace. Yours, too. Uh, permit me to present myself to you. Well, thank you very kindly, but I don't think my Uncle Jed had let me keep you. Oh, your Grace. Yours, too. Uh, I am Cynthia Fenwick. Oh, hey, is your ma coming? Uh, no, we are quite alone. Uh, well, well, shall we go in the water? Uh, no, I'd rather not. Well, uh, then why don't you just sit here and you can watch me? Oh, your grace. <laughs> Yours too. <laughs> Now watch here. Are you watching, Cynthia? Oh, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> All right, now, here we go. <laughs> you get the idea? Well, it looks as if you are taking a bath. <laughs> That's all right. Come on in. Your grace. <laughs> Yours, too. <laughs> Mobile operator, give me JL13411. No, no, make that one, two. I want the front seat. <laughs> I thought I told you to stay out of sight in the kitchen. Now, look here. I have taken all the abuse I intend to take in this house. Clamp it, look, or no clamp it, look. Duke or no duke. I refuse to... Oh, Beasley! Come quickly, please. This is... Now, you get out of here. And take that other antique with you. I refuse to take orders from a poorly dressed, ill-mannered, overweight clinging woman. Why, you loutish hillbilly. I am Mrs. Milburn Drysdale. And what does that mean? It means that I am a pillar of society. You were a pillar. I am cutting you down to a stump. Don't you dare pull a knife on me. The only thing I'm going to pull on you is your head. <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, Granny said she had trouble scrubbing the winter. How'd you do with the daughter? I tried, Uncle Jet, but that girl ain't washed in so long I couldn't sell her on the idea. <laughs> Granny said the winter bucked like a mule, too, and then she busted loose and run. <laughs> Can we eat now? Yeah, Jethro, scoot up the back way and get some clothes on. Hey, you, you know something, Uncle Jet? That skinny little rascal, all she wanted to do was tickle me behind the ear and scratch my belly. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Miss Drysdale and the widow Fenwick is having a real cat fight in the front hall. Let me up, you female wrestler. I'll have you drummed out of Beverly Hills. Ah, show me a collar. Hold her right there. No. Now I'm going to finish the job with a Fenwick. Did you call her Fenwick? I did. Here now, get off that poor starving Miss Fenwick. You all right with her? You all right? Oh, I have never been less all right in my entire life. My life. Beasley's here. What's the matter? Ask no questions. Just flee for your life. <laughs> Uncle Jeff, can we please eat now? Not me and you, Jethro. A fellow named Beasley just grabbed the widow and her young and made off with him. Come on, we gotta catch him. <laughs> Close. Well, I'll be doggone. That Beasley feller is the one that lives in that big mansion. And he's taking the widow and Cynthia into his house. And bowing and scraping to him, too. Uncle Jed, you was right about not speaking judgment on that rich fella. Yeah, it looks like the spirit of love sure took a hold of him, all right. Come on, Jethro, let's go home and have some possum. <laughs> Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. 
They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.